Big news coming out of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee yesterday. They're considering legislation that will allow commercial filming in national parks for small content creators, regardless of whether your channel be monetized or not. And they're also considering renewal of the Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act. And that we know the act that allows the reservation system across the national parks to exist. So we're gonna get into both of those issues here on the channel right about now. Friends, welcome back to Park Junkie. Todd C. coming at you here from the great indoors this evening. Have a nice campfire tucked right in the wall back there because Pink Floyd told me long ago that it's nice to warm your bones beside the fire. Let's get right into the meat of the new legislation coming from the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee chaired by Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia and its ranking member, John Barrasso out of the state of Wyoming. Now Barrasso, a few years ago, back in 2021, he sponsored legislation known as the Film Act. And at the time in, in 2021, when Senate Bill 1616 was introduced, Barrasso termed it the Film Act, the Federal Interior Land Media Act. And he sought at that time to allow commercial filming inside the parks. And here was a statement on it. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. The Film Act modernizes film and photography permitting on public lands gives outdoor enthusiasts the ability to share their adventures without having to deal with burdensome red tape. The Film Act is also a win for the First Amendment. It does away with the unconstitutional permitting scheme that requires permits and fees for some types of filming and photography content, but not for others. So as you can see, Barrasso is a fan of YouTube content. Apparently, maybe he even watches Park Junkie. Who knows? But he definitely is standing up for the First Amendment and the rights of content creators to produce content from public lands across this great nation. So I'd like to applaud him on that. And it looks like Manchin is right on board with him as they're proposing this legislation to move forward. Now, the bill that is uh, being considered at this time is known as America's Outdoor Recreation Act of 2023. And there's a lot in this act, a lot to unpack. It's about 200 pages of legal rigmarole and I, when I started this Park Junkie project, you can bet that there was nothing I looked forward to more than sitting down and looking over federal legislation, dissecting legal opinions, and constructing letters that we could send to our senators to preserve our access to federal lands and to preserve our First Amendment rights. Anyway, reading through the bill here, let's get on down to business. The Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act, nothing really substantial of change in here aside from the fact that they want to make this permanent now. At this point, it was first passed, I think, in 2004. They had to go through and pass it in increments every five or 10 years. They're looking to make it permanent this time. So if language is not added, that restricts the ability of third-party private contractors to come in and siphon funds from the top of national park reservation and entrance fees, it may be very difficult to ever remove that ability. So we need to be in our letters to the Senate Energy and Natural Resource Committee demanding that they install language that removes that ability. This has to happen. You need to be sending these letters to not only the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee members, but you need to be sending these letters to your senators as well. They are supposed to take your concerns and talk with their associates in the Senate uh, and let them know what concerns they're getting from their state. So if we have a groundswell of people that are willing to send emails, send letters, make phone calls, and sit down with these senators, this is how we're going to affect the change. Now, there are four stages to this. You can send an email, and I'm gonna post in the description, in the video description, a letter that you can send via email. You just copy it, and then you go over to your senator's webpage. It's very easy to find that. You just Google search, contact page, copy, paste. You're gonna have to put your name in there and your address so that they know you're a citizen of their state. Poof, there you go. They've got the letter, and if they're getting enough of these, they're going to take notice of that. Secondly, not only send the email, go ahead, and send them a snail mail letter. Send them a traditional letter. Print this out, write your own, whatever you want to do. And then again, with my letters, you can amend those to your liking. You don't have to take it per verbatim from what I'm writing out. If you want to add your personal story in there, please feel free to do that. Now, if you can send the snail mail, that's great. That's level two. So level one, send the email. Level two, send the real mail. Level three, call them. Call that office. The phone number's right there on the website. Go ahead. Call them up and say, hey, 
I'm not happy with this and you can read the letter that I'm that I'm printing you can just call them up and read that letter to them that would be great the more calls they get the more attention they're gonna pay to it and if you'd like the five star level that's right we're skipping level four because that doesn't even matter level five you make an appointment to go and sit down with your senator in fact that's what I'm doing that's what Park Junkie's doing next week headed into the belly of the beast to go sit down with both of my senators now they're probably gonna pawn me off on their uh, staff but I think I may have a meeting with one of them and I'm meeting with staff for the other definitely but I'm going to let my voice be heard I'm going to let them know what I think needs to happen with both the Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act as well as the commercial filming restrictions and who am I I'm an unknown nobody that's okay you are somebody send them these letters but in order for them to take notice we need a lot of people doing this so share this information share the letters make sure you don't have to share my content I personally don't care I just want to make sure that these lands are available to us as American citizens and to citizens of the globe and I want to be able to film according to the First Amendment rights inside my public lands now I've been in contact with Rob over at Overland V 1.0 and uh, he has an overlanding channel over there for you guys that want to check that out I'd be really thankful if you went and checked his channel out he's been doing a lot of work to get to the bottom of this and get us in contact with some folks over there at the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee they are requesting letters they need some of these letters to come in to really sure up some support for this film act moving in through uh, in, in the coming weeks here make some suggestions to them to sure up some of the language because there are still a few loose ends the Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act nothing really substantial of change in here they're trying to make it permanent they don't have any language put in it which is going to restrict in any way the operations of rec.gov so we need to be letting them know we're not pleased with that <laughs> Title IV, Filming and Still Photography Within National Park System. This is the section which deals with commercial filming inside national parks and federal lands, and it is of interest to us in the content creation community. You're going to want to pay attention to this. I'm going to highlight it all right here for you. Section 1, in general, the Secretary shall ensure that filming or still photography activity or similar recording project in a system unit be carried out in accordance with three things. A, the laws and policies applicable to the service. B, the applicable general management plan. And C, this section. 2, no permits required. There you go. The Secretary shall not require an authorization or permit or assess a fee if a fee for filming or still photography is not otherwise required. For filming or still photography, that involves fewer than six individuals so you've got five people or less meets all the requirements described in paragraph five and we're going to get into paragraph five here in a minute because it's a doozy and B is merely incidental to an activity or event that is allowed or authorized at the system unit this is like a wedding or a um, family reunion or something like that. and if you're a uh, wedding photographer or an event photographer and you've been hired for that event that permit covers you you don't need to worry about it even if you are being financially compensated for your duties there and C news gathering activities are exempt as well now what do we need to be looking at in this section it says involves fewer than six individuals what is the definition of a definition of involve and this seems like it might be um, arbitrary but it, it's actually not it's very important and anybody who's uh, making a case for something in a legal setting is going to be very insistent upon definitions and the, the definition of, in, of involves here is critical because if involves means anyone that appears in your film let's say I'm filming for example in a cave in a cave tour I did a tour in uh, Mammoth Caves I did the wild cave tour which is a six-hour underground tour you talk crawling through tunnels and all that it was very exciting very cool time now I went to do that tour by myself I signed up on my own and went in by myself however the tour had like I don't know how many people were on the tour it's probably 10 or 15 people on that tour and I did not have anyone involved in the filming it was just I however I was filming other people and numerous people would appear on my film because obviously I'm filming people they didn't have a problem with me filming in fact a lot of them thought it was really fun 
But what were they involved? They weren't, I don't even know their names. So were they involved? I don't know. That is an area that I really need to understand what they mean there. Also, this spring I have an opportunity, I've been invited to go on a trip of a lifetime, a Grand Canyon float trip, 21 days on the Grand Canyon with a crew of people. I don't know how many people are on this, but I'm assuming it's gonna be more than five, and it's probably gonna be more than eight. So we need to sure up the definition of involved, because with a Grand Canyon trip like that, you bet I'm going to film it. It's a trip of a lifetime. How often do you get that opportunity? I'm going to film it, yes. It's my public land, this is my trip of a lifetime, and I'm filming it. However, um, by their definition of involves, what will that mean for me filming that trip? I don't know. We're gonna have to figure that out. Something I put as a question, as a, as a recommendation in the footnotes down here uh, in my letters. We need to sure up this definition, and there's a couple of other definitions that we also need to sure up, and we'll talk about those briefly as we continue to peruse through this document. Section three, looking at this filming and still photography authorization for de minimis use. You would not be paying for that. It would be available on site, and it's for people who are filming with six, seven, or eight people. If you have more than eight people, that's where we get into section four here, required permits. If you have more than eight people, that's when you're going to need a commercial filming permit that is probably much like the permit that you would be applying for today. Section five, requirements referred to in paragraphs 2A2, 3F2, 4B4, and 7C are as follows. <laughs> you love all that, don't you? It's back and forth, trust me, oh my God. I've kind of honed this down for you because if you look at the original, it's just like, ah, it gives you a headache and I had to, man, it really made me want to just start drinking immediately even though it was early in the morning on St. Patrick's Day. I didn't, I held out. We're still sitting here in a good frame of mind. So in this section, the requirements are as follows. A, a person conducts the filming or still photography activity in a manner that does not impede or intrude on the experience of other visitors, except as otherwise authorized, does not disturb or negatively impact natural or cultural resources and environmental or scenic value, and allows for equitable allocation or use of facilities of the applicable system unit. B, the person conducts the filming or still photography activity at a location in which the public is allowed. C, the person conducting the filming or still photography activity does not require the exclusive use of the site or area. The person does not conduct the filming or still photography activity in a localized area that receives a very high volume of visitation. In the discretion of the secretary, negatively impact the experience of another visitor in the localized area. So let's take a look at section D there because that is open for a wide variety of interpretation. What is the definition of localized area? What is the definition of a very high volume of visitation? Generally, I try to film away from other people, but sometimes I have made videos where I was in areas that could be considered high visitation, such as like the video we did in uh, Yellowstone's Upper Geyser Basin. We toured the Upper Geyser Basin that I would probably have to admit is a very high vo an area with a very high volume of visitation. However, I do not, I, I take great pains when I'm out there filming not to negatively impact the experience of another visitor. And this is something I think everyone who's a content creator is going to be working in public spaces like this. You need to have respect for the other people that are around you, people that are there to just simply enjoy the experience and they're not there interested in your production of whatever you're doing. Don't be a bum. Don't be a loser. The bums will always lose. The bums will always lose. Do you hear me, Lebowski? The bums will always lose. So be respectful of other people's experience in that area. We need to add language that shores up what localized means and what very high volume of visitation might mean because it looks like here they just want to leave that up to the discretion of the secretary, and that would be the Secretary of Interior, I'm assuming, who would probably confer that off to the park superintendent. And if you get a park superintendent who's not a fan of um, content creators filming on park lands, they're going to start saying all sorts of places are areas of high visitation and that you would be negatively affecting other visitors to the parks. E, the person conducting the filming or still photography does not use a set or staging equipment subject to the limitation that handheld equipment such as a tripod, monopod, and handheld lighting equipment shall not be considered staging equipment for the purposes 
of this subparagraph. So you can have your handheld device, you can have a tripod, a monopod, and handheld lighting equipment. Now can your lighting equipment go on the tripod? I don't know. They're not really clear about that. I would argue you could. Uh, if you can put a tripod down for a camera, it would be the same environmental impact to put a light on that. Uh, let's move on. F, the person conducting the filming or still photography adheres to visitor use policies. Moving to G, the filming or still photography is not likely to result in additional administrative costs for the park. And H, no drones. All right, cool. Moving on, six, getting into the meat of the project right here. Content creation. That's for all you content creators out there. You rebels, you. <laughs> Regardless of distribution platform, any video, still photograph, audio recording for commercial or non-commercial content creation at a system unit shall be considered to be filming or still photography activity under this section. And C, this is the meat of the legislation right here. This is the content you came for. This is what you want to hear. Monetary compensation. The receipt of monetary compensation by the person conducting the filming or still photography activity shall not affect the permissibility of the filming. So right there, boom, that's what you want to hear, basically saying the fact that you make money off of content that you're producing on social media platforms, is it's, it's not applicable. It doesn't matter. Case, case closed on that. That's what we want to hear, absolutely, because there's no reason for that. Um, so that right there is the meat of this legislation. However, is this legislation perfect? No, it is not perfect. It is, it is riddled with problems and questions if you really get down to it. The definitions, definitions of involved, need the definitions tightened up on localized and visitor enjoyment. There's a few areas there that could be, could be argued, I don't know. And here's the one that I'm really concerned with is in section seven, paragraph D, Wilderness Act applicability. In general, nothing in this subsection supersedes the provisions of the Wilderness Act. The Wilderness Act is one area that I'm concerned with here because that wilderness system of the United States today, can, it, like I said, there's 803 areas now encompassing more than 111 million acres of land. So that's larger than the state of California. So yeah, there's a lot of wilderness land out there that you're not going to be able to film on. And in our contact with the folks over there at the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, I asked that question and the response I got was, if something is currently not allowed in the wilderness, then it, this law will not supersede those prohibitions. That is as far as we could take this provision without having environmental groups oppose the bill. And there are a lot of environmental groups that are in support of this bill. This bill probably will pass. It has a lot of support from the wilderness community. Your Sierra Club, your REIs, your, your big kids. They're all in favor of this bill. And rightfully so on a number of issues. However, man, I don't think people have really looked into the issue of the Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act. And I think they're overlooking the problems with the Film Act on wilderness lands as well because this is going to leave a lot of areas of, I mean what if you want to climb Denali and you want to film that climb up the highest peak on the North American continent you won't be able to what if you want to climb uh, Mount Rainier what if you wanted to go into the back country of Zion and do a spectacular slot canyon you know you won't be able to do that just because you're not impacting the, the fact that you have a GoPro attached to your head as you're running through a canyon in Zion has no impact whatsoever on that land it has no impact whatsoever on a slot canyon that gets hit by flash floods numerous times a year which have logs and freight trains just crashing through them. But to tell you that you filming walking through there is going to create an impact on that land is absolute bullshit. But, hey, this is better than nothing. However, I've got some letters down here with the concerns in it and I encourage you to take these letters, copy them, paste them into your browser, send them over to your senators, forward these out to all of your friends, forward this to your family members, forward this to your uh, public land users in the clubs that you're in. Make sure that people know that this is going forward. We need to make an impact here and this is our opportunity to do that right here with the American Outdoors Recreation Act of 2023. Friends, I'm gonna check out. Thanks for joining me. I hope you guys out there um, take advantage of the opportunity we have before us 
And uh, I'll be checking in with you real soon because we got a lot going on in the world of national parks and public lands. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Cheers. Peace. Bye.